Breaking news in college basketball. Yes, we are talking college basketball. Uh, here is the AP preseason poll as the Kansas Jayhawks of the Big 12 check in at number one. Uh, number two, you got Alabama after they made it to the final four for the first time in school history. And the reigning champs, yeah, we're going to get to them in a minute. UConn Huskies coming in at number three on our preseason poll. get familiar with our good friend and college basketball analyst Matt Norlander because we're going to be seeing him a lot more often as the basketball season gets underway. Matt, let's dive into that new AP poll. It's the first one of the preseason and we got to start with the team up top. Of course, the number one Kansas Jayhawks. They were bounced in the second round of March Madness last year, which surprised a lot of people given their expectations throughout the season. But now they get the top spot. They also get the conference player of the year in Hunter Dickinson. How do they maintain those expectations going into the season, Matt? Well, that's going to be a big storyline because a year ago, Kansas was in this exact same spot. Kansas was the comfortable preseason number one team, and that didn't wind up working out. Now they had injury issues, obviously, and KU didn't even make it to the Sweet 16. In fact, Kansas, from a metric standpoint, had its worst season yet under Bill Self. But bringing back Hunter Dickinson, who we announced on Monday was a preseason first team CBS Sports All-American, obviously that's a big time factor. But Dewan Harris, KJ Adams were big time returning players there and then they bring in some critical guys in the portal. You know, Zeke Mayo, who's not a, a well-known name if you're not a diehard college basketball fan, but was one of the better mid-major players in the country last season. Rylan Griffin could be one of the best three-point shooters. He comes over via Alabama. They are, uh, they are well-stocked and a fair pick to be preseason number one. This is just a, a, a slight teaser. My annual list of the top 101 teams in college basketball will be released later this week on CBS Sports. I do not have Kansas number one, but I have them somewhere in my top five. But this is not unexpected. And a shout to our own Gary Parrish, who obviously updates his rankings throughout the course of the offseason. He has had Kansas in the number one spot uh, going back to the late spring. Yeah, you guys are busy even when we're not talking about you on HQ. You guys are putting in the work so we can be ready for this moment like we are today. Let's jump and talk about the team in that number two spot, Matt. It is the Alabama Crimson Tide. I thought this was interesting, too, because when Mark Sears decided to come back in the offseason, uh, you guys at CBSSports.com jumped them in the top 25 and one uh, up to number two. So now we're seeing that sort of carry over into the AP here as they take over uh, that second spot as well. What do you like about Alabama this season? Well, it does start with Mark Sears, who was a tremendous player last season, one of only two players in the country to average at least 21 points, four rebounds, four assists, and a steal and a half. The other player was Xavier Johnson at Southern Illinois. He's no longer in college basketball. So from a statistical standpoint, there's no returning player this season that accomplished more last season and is, is involved again in college hoops this season. So yes, Sears is the head of the snake. He's not the only player, but Alabama brings back um, plenty of impact guys and got a lot done in the portal. You know, Cliff Amori from Rutgers is a is a big time defensive presence there. Um, they've got a guy named Youngblood who came from South Florida who's going to be a key player there. The offense has been well proven, well established at this point. So it does start with Sears, Alabama coming off its first Final Four in program history and is the fair choice and the and and to me, the pragmatic choice to be the preseason favorite in the SEC. So uh, as we look at these teams that are populating the top of the poll, also keep in mind that we've got a lot of familiar faces back. This is going to be a great year for men's college basketball because we've got a lot of guys who were All-Americans last season, a higher percentage of returning All-Americans from last season to this season than we've had in more than a decade and a half. Feels like a lot of unfinished business for a lot of these guys as well. Of course, we're reacting to the most recent AP Top 25 poll in college basketball. And we continue our conversation with the rating chance, Matt. UConn coming in at number three on this list. It kind of feels like they're the underdogs, if you will, uh, going into this season. But listen, uh, unfinished business, Dan Hurley doesn't have it because he won it all last year, but definitely wants to win a third one, especially when you think about him turning down that massive contract to the Lakers this offseason that had us all in a frenzy here. What are the expectations for UConn in 24? In stores, the expectations are to win another national championship, which if that were to happen, would mark something truly historic because we haven't seen something like that happen since John Wooden coached at UCLA. Alex Caravan is the only returning starter for Connecticut. And because of how good this program has been and how incredible Dan Hurley and his assistant, that whole staff has been, that's why UConn's number three. There really is almost no other situation I could possibly envision where a team that won a national championship lost four starters 
and didn't bring in the number one recruiting class, which UConn did not. It has some some intriguing freshmen, but it's not bringing in you know two or three five star recruits that are poised to be top ten picks. That's not the situation in stores right now. And yet UConn sitting here at number three in the preseason it speaks to the power of Dan Hurley. And really, you know, UConn can claim the best coach and the best program in the sport right now. And so that's why they were given um, given that early season shine there as a true national championship contender. But there's going to have to be some big names that step up here. Samson Johnson will step into the middle. You've got some, some second-year players, Jalen Stewart, Solomon Ball. They're going to have to become big-time players. But also keep an eye on a freshman named Liam McNeely. He is the one newcomer to the class, to this team, that I think has a shot at being a lottery pick. And it wouldn't surprise me if he pushes every other player on that roster for being the leading scorer. But ultimately with UConn, I think Hassan Diara, expected to run the offense, becomes the most critical player. Can he step in and really be a great floor general? I know Dan Hurley likes him a lot. I saw a video clip of Dan Hurley coaching over the weekend, and I know he is an intense guy, but to see it in real time, just how intense he is with those guys, I would not be surprised if number three uh, in terms of those national championships come this year. Let's stay on the East Coast, Matt Norlander, because we've got to talk about Cooper Flagg and all of the buzz he has been generating for these Blue Devils. Uh, he's a CBS All-American, which we'll get into later this afternoon. But in terms of Flagg as a player, helping out this Duke squad kind of get back to the top of the the uh, basketball world here. What does his skill set do for this Duke team that makes them so much of a threat this year? Well, um, Cooper Flagg is the most decorated uh, recruit and buzzed about recruit that's come into men's college basketball in a long time. I would actually argue Anthony Davis was the last time heading into a season we had a freshman with this much budget. Zion Williamson became an absolute phenomenon, but he going into Duke's season, he wasn't even considered the best freshman on that team. That narrative soon changed just a couple games in, but Cooper Flagg's hype going in exceeds even that. You see all the five stars there. Come on, Malawatch is a big who might be a Derek Lively type. Uh, Con Kniffle's getting a lot of buzz. I'm actually going to be down there in North Carolina to see Duke, to see Cooper Flagg, to see North Carolina later this week. I'm excited to do it. But Flagg's ability, his two-way ability, incredible defensive presence, great defensive instincts there. That's what makes Duke um, you know, a preseason favorite in the ACC. Duke winds up here at number seven in the preseason AP Top 25 poll, which I think is, is fair. A year ago, actually, Duke was second, if memory serves. Uh, Haley, it was Kansas won Duke second in November of 2023, and now here with a much more lauded freshman class, they don't get quite the same amount of buzz. Maybe that's a good thing, not putting too much expectation from a team perspective going in, but make no mistake, Cooper Flag and all the rage within, uh, we can't wait to see him play and see what this Duke team looks like. You've got key returnees and Tyrese Proctor and Caleb Foster coming back, and I can easily make a case that those two players combined mean just as much, if not more, to Duke's chances at making a Final Four as singularly as, uh, as Cooper Flagg is one guy. Duke starts the year at number seven in the preseason AP poll. Uh, let's go back to the SEC because we still get Coach Cal in the SEC, but obviously he is going to be at a different school. He, of course, is leading Arkansas, who is not listed in our AP top 10 uh, map, but still a lot of expectations for Coach Cal and the Razorbacks this year. Uh, what do you think of them going into the season? Yeah, I'm actually a bit lower on Arkansas. Um, you don't see it on the screen right here, but Kentucky, the school that Calipari left, is 23rd in the preseason AP Top 25 poll. Arkansas sitting there at 16. Arkansas did a complete roster fit for the most part. The only player returning is Trevon Brazil, who decided to stick around. But otherwise, Calipari brought in an entirely new cast of characters. In the backcourt, you've got Janelle Davis. You've got DJ Wagner. Janelle Davis was at FAU. Wagner, of course, was at Kentucky, where he struggled as a freshman. We see if if he can turn it on and match uh, Davis's prolific offensive ability. Boogie Fland is another freshman of note to keep an eye on. He'll play for Arkansas this season. Um, you've got Jonas Adu coming over from Tennessee with Arkansas. Listen, it still looks weird to me to see Arkansas uh, to see Calipari and Arkansas red, but uh, but we'll get used to it in no time there. And this is a worthy preseason top 25 team again when I release my uh, preseason top 101 list I'm just a, a tip here uh, I will have Arkansas in the top 25 but I don't have them in the top 20 I actually like Kentucky's roster a bit better than what Mark Pope was able to construct there but uh, but we're eagerly awaiting to see how Calipari begins really the true winter of his career and how Arkansas adjusts to a new era under Cal can't wait to see uh, it get going the, the Razorbacks have no uh, no short of intriguing games well before SEC play 
in uh, in November and then obviously into December. Yeah, it's going to be weird, like you said, to see him not in that blue and white and instead in that crimson and or the red and white, whatever the Arkansas colors are. It's going to be weird. Matt Norlander joining us for the first of several college basketball updates. Basketball season is officially here, guys. Make sure you catch Matt Norlander and his co-host Gary Parrish on the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Uh, their latest episode is actually a special one. A former ESPN insider Adrian Wojnarowski hopped on to talk about his next adventure adventure uh, with the Bonnies of St. Bonaventure. So make sure you scan that QR code and listen in wherever you get your audio.